What's going on, everybody? We are back, and today we are tying a Euro jig streamer. Um, it, you can call it a lure. So basically, we plan on using this on our Euro rod, and it is a um, just an easy tie on an articulated streamer with a rear single trailer hook and some UV resin. So it's a lot of fun to tie. Um, we're gonna go ahead and demo this with just something that we put together. Not quite sure if there's uh, some other things out there like this, I'm sure there is, but um, something we just decided to, to try. And we took our uh, wire shank and basically put it into a uh, clothes hanger style um, configuration. So it, it, it looks like a clothes hanger. So that's just what I've been calling it. Um, we just, we make up a few of these at a time, um, using just a wire tool, um, that you can get at a craft and hobby store. Other channels that you've seen out there, I'm, I'm sure, um, also use this same type of tool. And then, uh, we use just a Marlin hard wire. Um, that's what this wire is made out of. It is just a, oh, I think it's a 180 pound test. Yeah, it's a 180 pound test wire. Okay. So let's go ahead and, and get started on this. We're going to try to keep this video short. Hope everybody had a great Easter. Uh, we have not done a video in about a week now, and we plan on putting a lot more of these out there. So. We're gonna just start off with a rear trailer hook, same ones that we were using with our um, with our game changer belly scratchers that we were tying. And we're just gonna throw that in the hook, grab our thread, and just get our thread laid on there. We are going to two-tone this tail, and because we're gonna get this fly to ride inverted, uh, we're gonna make sure that we put the black on top and the white on the bottom. So we're just gonna take our black marabou feather here, pull it down to the, to the tips. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull the tip out of this, this feather here, just to give it as much movement back there as possible. And this would be the top. So we're gonna make sure that we put it on the top of our uh, hook orientation, the way it's gonna be on our fly. Pull that down and pull this feather up. Just to make sure it's all the fibers are secured on the top. And we're gonna make this tail fairly short because we want it to be just beyond the bend of our hook. I'm gonna layer the white underneath that with a white marabou feather. Snip off that excess. <clears throat> and it doesn't really matter what color thread you use uh, because we're gonna coat this thread the next thing we're going to use is a UV enhancer, and this is uh, made by Cascade. We're not affiliated with anybody as far as material stuff goes. Just like all of you out there, we buy our stuff retail. And we're just putting this uh, video together just to inspire um, some different thinking and um, help any of you out there become better fly tires. So if you like our channel, you like what we're doing here, go ahead and uh, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you know when we go live or when we post a video, if you happen to miss the live event. We're gonna try to do these live events multiple times a week. Right now we're just kind of getting going uh, with one day a week here. So you can see um, that's basically the whole tail configuration. And we are going to just whip finish this with our fingers. 
snip our thread. And just to make things a little easier on ourselves, I'm gonna come in with a alcohol marker and I'm just gonna color up that thread. Don't have to do this step because we're gonna be using a black UV resin right now to coat that up. So I'm gonna take this solar res UV black resin and I'm just going to coat over top of those threads Just make a nice little bead bump. And then we're gonna come in with our same torch that we used on our last fly that we tied for you. And I'm gonna go ahead and tip it upside down for a second just to level out that resin. If you uh, seen us do the rotation on the last fly, we basically rolled it like this until that resin became equal all the way around the hook if we're trying to get a desired shape and then we're going to hit it with our torch and give that a second to cure up and then we're going to come in with our coat hanger shank that we we showed you here and, and again, we just we just bent this wire up, this 180 pound wire to fit the shape that we were going for because this is a jig style fly. We want the top here, and you notice I left I left all of these openings. I didn't trim any of these pieces because I'm going to tie all of that in here, um, so that way there is no way this this fly is going to come apart. So I wanted to make sure we had some durability in that fly and it is going to be hook point up so i'm going to put it in this orientation here pull it out of the vise flip it around go ahead and put the wire into the vise and then i'm going to use my rubber band here to hold this hook point back to keep those fibers from getting in the resin when we get to that point. So if you want to see what I just did there, what I did was I pulled, I know the rubber band's green, I apologize for that. I pulled the rubber band back, wrapped it around the neck of my vise, and then I put it around the a spot on the bottom of the vise so that way I can still get my rotations and um, that rubber band's not going to twist up in the neck. So we got our close hanger here. We're going to go ahead and close that off with our thread. Looks like I need to tighten up my jaws. Bring that thread all the way back. Trim off our tag. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna close off this portion of wire with a healthy coat of thread. I'm gonna bring it all the way up to here this is going to be the head of our fly, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that down tight. And I'm going to go ahead and take a pair of vice grips, and I'm going to mash that down just a little bit more. This isn't, this isn't a functional part of the fly, so it doesn't really, doesn't really matter too much about putting an extra bend in that wire. We'll get it to line up here. So I'm going to bring my thread almost to the nose, bring it back, and just like putting in a pair of post, I'm going to go up the shank and I'm going to close off 
with my thread the portion there. So trying to put some durability into this fly. Get that line back up. Looks pretty good. All right, so we're gonna bring it all the way back. And at this point, I have a piece of uh, 40 pound mono. It's just a small piece of, of mono. And I'm gonna go ahead and tie that in on the bottom of this fly. This is only the second fly I've tied of this pattern. And uh, like I said, it might, it might exist out there, but I just kind of made it up in my head um, based on some other, other flies and lures that are out there. You're gonna see what that 40 pound mono is for here in a second. The next thing we're gonna use is some Mirage Tinsel Opal, size large. And we're gonna put a healthy coat of this material on the entire shank. I'll tie it as far back as I can. And then I'm gonna wrap it forward and I'm also wrapping that 40 pound mono. I'm trying to keep it towards the bottom, but it's kind of on the side here. Doesn't really matter until I get to up, up to this point. And I'm gonna bring that thread all the way to the front of the fly. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start my wrap. I know this is gonna kinda of get in the way here. Let me go ahead and put a, get that out of my way. Go ahead and put a whip finish. Just do a whip finish or a couple half hitches here in the front. See if I can get my thread cradle to hold that there. I'm just gonna loop this mono through the front portion of this fly to keep it out of my way. This way I can wrap this um, tinsel using my rotary portion of my vise. And I'm just gonna lay down a nice little base. This is gonna give us that undertone, just like in the fly jigs that we, we tied in our last video. And wrap it on each side of this 40 pound mono. I don't want to see any thread underneath. And once I get it up to this point here, that's as far as I really need to take it. Try to keep that 40 pound out of my way. Should stuck it through the tail. I'm gonna do that right now. It's a good little trick if you're ever putting in a, a bead or anything. Use your eyes of your the front and the back of your fly or wherever you can to kind of keep that out of the way. So I'm gonna wrap this up to that nose, drop my thread, and tie off my tinsel. I'm 
I'm going to use my whip finish tool here to keep it nice and close. It tends to want to roll off the front of this fly. But we're going to coat that in resin here in a second so it's not going to matter either. We're going to take that same UV black, black color uh, resin and we're going to coat the nose of this fly. We're going to fill that gap in. and then just hit it with your torch. Okay. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come back in with a bead And we're going to throw that onto that 40 pound mono. We want this bead to kind of sag a little bit. This is going to give this fly a hot spot. And um, looks like I probably should have tied it in. This is the first time I used the mono. What I'll do on the next one is I will tie it in right there, right underneath this um, opal. I'm going to have to come back in with a little bit extra of that. So don't make that mistake. Um, I'm going to have to throw my thread back on here. Since we're doing this live, you're, you're seeing us figure out real world problems here with fly tying. Um, like I said, I just came up with this kind of in my head. I didn't watch anybody tie it or, or anything. There we go. So what, that's what I kind of was trying to achieve there. I want that bead to hang down low. That's going to help kill this fly. I'll throw another little piece of Mirage over top of that just to cover up my mistake. All of this is going to be coated with uh, with a resin, so does it really matter that there's a little bit of a boo boo underneath everything? I don't think so. This is the fun about fly tying. It's just it's kind of like it's an art, right? So it's just fun to mess around and try different things and because I don't care that much I'm going to come and just hit this with the black marker on those white threads just so they're not showing through. Okay, I'll do the same thing on the threads on the eye of the technically eye of the fly. All right. So the next thing we're going to come in with is a little bit of UV thick and I'm going to try to fill in this gap below the bead here. Start building up our body. We're going to use a, a, the UV medium um, solar as so for now, that's all I'm going to try to do is hit that with the thick, just because it doesn't run all over the place. So you can kind of see what we're doing there. So that, that um, orange little hot spot and bead is going to help hold this fly in the proper orientation that we want it in. So now we're going to come in with the medium 
UV cure. And we want to make sure our vise is free flowing at this point because this stuff moves fast. I'm going to coat all the way around the nose, keep it moving so it doesn't drip. Want to make sure we don't get it up in our eye. And we're just going to build, build a base. So kind of watch how the, the, the resin is kind of coating your fly and then adjust the speed of your spin until it starts to smooth itself out. And it's going to look bumpy in some spots, but it'll all look good in the end. We'll fill in all those gaps. Right, I'm going to come in with another layer. And this body is going to look more like a shad shape than the than the last one. The last one, um, like I said, we're just playing around with this pattern. So the last one we put in the bead and we put it directly onto the shank. This time I wanted to try and put the bead uh, hanging lower. So I wanted to throw it on a piece of mono to try to get it away from the shank so I can see if it's going to keel differently. It's also going to build more of a belly here and it's going to give it a wider um, profile on the shoulders and then across the the belly of the other fly I actually put in a glass rattle so if you want to put in a rattle put put your rattle in like right here it's just a, a double ball bearing glass rattle and um, we decided to not put a rattle in this one we'll, we're just testing this out so it's more or less a prototype fly that we're putting together all right so we're going to come in with some uh, Right here, I'm trying to get it in the frame. This is the thick hard cure, and we're going to use this to fill in our body. Trying to make sure that this body is staying as even as we can get it. It's a lot of resin to be using, I know. So I'm trying to build up the top of the fly, the nose of the fly, the belly of the fly. Starting to get a little bit of a shape here. Come back in with the medium. <clears throat> if I had a huge bottle of the the thick hard cure, I would probably use that. But I have a large bottle of the medium, so that's why I'm using that. So we're gonna try to try to get it to fill in here. I hope hopefully it doesn't start dripping on me. And you can really see how that 
uh, core of that fly gives off a lot of shimmer in this UV resin. And I'm just bouncing between both my cures. I knew this one was going to take up a little bit more resin just because of uh, the shape that I was kind of going for. If you want just a slender minnow body, you don't have to use as much resin. I was trying to go more for that shad look. Just going to try to paint this resin all over this fly. See that shape starting to come in. Before I lose that shape, I'm going to go ahead and hit it. So you can see we're starting to get more of that, that shad shape that we're going for. And at this point, I'm going to start adding a little bit of the, the black color to the top of the back. Blend that in from the tail to the nose. And then I'll come back in with my uh, UV thick and fill in any of the unproportional uh, gaps in the fly. So I'm just going to, I'm cheating a little bit. I'm going to take my black alcohol marker again. Make sure this is dry to the touch when you start putting your color in. And this is just to put like a little bit of a base color down. This isn't, this isn't what I'm going to actually use. I'm going to go back to using the black uh, UV cure. I also have some uh, UV coloring that I'm going to be playing around with here. We're going to be making some flies with that in the next few videos. So if you want to see us do that, uh, make sure you subscribe and follow along so you can get notified. Alright, so put a little color down. I'm going to come back in with my UV thick right over top of the marker. Fill in that back gap right there that I don't like. I'm going to let that hang so I can get rid of that bump. And we're just building up a body and just trying to build that, you know, that football or that teardrop shape um, pattern that a minnow has. Gave it that shad or guppy look with the low hanging, sagging belly. And liking the way it's looking so far. So now I'm going to come in with my UV black and I'm going to go back over and the reason I use the marker is because I'm trying not to use too much of this black resin because this is what we use for our small Euro jigs for our paragons and whatnot and I don't want to waste all my material so I'm trying to trying to cheat a little bit using the marker So now we're going to get some eyes put onto the fly. And we'll put some really nice close up photos of this fly um, that we just made along with the first one, that the first prototype. These are technically both prototypes, but we're going to throw them up on our uh, Instagram page. So if you don't follow TLE Media, on Instagram it's TLE media and you can see all the different flies that we tie and come up with and um, that's where we put all of our, our good photos is on our Instagram page for you guys to see so now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take I'm gonna take some eyes here and I'm gonna take a little bit of the UV thick I'm gonna go ahead and engage my indexer 
portion of my vise here and I'm going to get a put a nice little dab right behind the nose and then I'm going to lay my eye right on that spot. Go ahead and hit that with my torch. I'm going to go ahead and throw an eye on the other side. And feel free to play around with color schemes. I mean, I'm going to I'm going to make a few more of these in some other colors for myself. Um, this one's just a straight basic uh, minnow pattern, uh, you know, your black and white, technically uh, standard minnow colors. But I'm going to do them in some other other variations as well. So, having trouble with my uh, with my chat portion of my my platform here. So if you guys are are chatting with me, I'll, I'll go ahead and answer all those questions that you might have at the end of the video. I'll go back through. All right, so we got our eyes on there. We got a cool little minnow jigging minnow pattern tied up here. I'm gonna go ahead and take some of my bone dry. We absolutely love this stuff. It's all solar, um, sol solares, solares, however you guys wanna say, who cares? And I'm gonna throw some of that right over top of the eyes and that's gonna help blend those eyes into the body. Same thing for the other side. Put a nice healthy drop right over the eye and the nose. Go ahead and hit that with my torch. So leave me some comments. What do you guys think? Is this a fly? Is this a lure? Does anybody even care? <laughs> I'm gonna throw it on a Euro rod. So um, my objective was get down quick and get down to a bottom of a deep hole and see if I can jig this thing up and down and draw on a big brown trout. I'm sure I can catch anything on this though. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and go over top of this with the light for a little while. Like I said, leave me some comments. Let me know. Let me know what you guys think. Um, if this is if this is a fly you would throw, if you wouldn't even put it in your box, if you think it looks cool, if you don't. Um, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna get out there, and if we catch a fish on this, we'll we'll post that on our Instagram page on TLE Media. But thank you for watching. Um, we're gonna keep doing these live videos. They're gonna be posted to our YouTube channel, so if you don't catch us live, you can always go back and um, check us out. TLE Media and Tight Lines Entertainment on YouTube. Also on Facebook, streaming to all of our platforms. Until next time, see you guys later.